Okay, this is the uh, computer voice circuit. It's uh, a circuit to make a metallic sounding voice. I mean, it'd be good for uh, if you're doing a musical play or some kind of sci-fi play, uh, you want a special sound effect. Uh, so what this will do is uh, you'll plug in a, a microphone or you can even use a recording of your own voice and feed it through this circuit. And what it'll do is it'll distort your voice uh, and make it sound like a metallic kind of robotic voice. I'll give you a demo of that at the end of this uh, circuit description. So what, what I'm going to do here is describe uh, the, the parts of this circuit. So basically there's two main parts to this circuit. There's this section here and this section down here. So we're going to talk about this section first. So uh, the two sections are a, a simple oscillator with a 555 timer and a basic op-amp audio amplifier. So we're going to talk about this audio amplifier first and then we'll discuss this section here and how they both uh, inter interact to produce this computer voice. So let's talk about the uh, op-amp audio amplifier first. These two resistors are only set here to set the bias value, which in other words, the, the middle value range that we want. In this case, it would be 3 volts above 0 volts. So you've got 0 volts, 0 volts here, 3 volts, and then the 6 volts, assuming the VCC is 6 volts. So that means uh, at the 3 volt value here, you're going to get the swing of the, uh, the signal. And it gives you enough swing to swing up to 6 volts and swing down to 0 volts. So that's why that voltage divider is there. The V out only really depends on this resistance here, which if we ignore this bit at the minute, just ignore these bits at the minute. So it would be this resistor R4 and this resistor R1. And the bigger the value of R4, the more amplification we're going to get at V out. Now why is that? Because well V out will be here and if this is a big resistor then um, it means that the voltage at this uh, place here will be much smaller than V out so the voltage here will be much smaller than V out remember that's been uh, amplified here because whatever goes on the inverting input will reduce this output the bigger the R4 the more will be V out compared to V in so that's basically how an audio amplifier using off amp will amplify an input voltage and give you a larger output voltage so the output voltage then will go into say a standard um, audio amplifier you know, you can use any amplifier, hi-fi amplifier, or any small, tiny amplifier. I'm, you know, I'm using this one here just to do that. So, uh, just a very cheap audio amplifier. But you can build your own, or you can use a hi-fi amplifier. Uh, so that's really uh, very, very briefly how the um, the op-amp audio amplifier part of this circuit works. Now, I missed out these parts above here. Now, these these sections here are will allow us to actually change what this value of the, the amplification is. By changing R4 we'll get different values of V out so that then if we manually change this uh, VR1 with our finger then we'll find that out here we'll get a, a different uh, output voltage. So what we have here is what's called a magnetic relay now if we we have a circuit that can control this it will switch in and out this whole section uh, each time it, it switches off, that whole section will switch off. Each time the relay is activated, this whole section is switched in again. So this allows us to, to modify how this works, how much of this change to the negative feedback we're, we're going to allow. And that gives us the sort of strange sound in the voice. I'll discuss that a little bit more. But basically, just uh, just take this. that this These two resistors here, this variable resistor VR1, um, which is a variable uh, potentiometer and this fixed resistor R4 and this magnetic relay here will actually modify the feedback resistance so uh, changing the amount of amplification now what's interesting is the magnetic relay switch here by switching that on and off at particular frequency we get this strange computer sort of warbling effect yeah which is how this works so now we're going to talk about how that warbling effect comes about and that's by using this very simple 555 timer now I've gone on one of my other circuits which describes uh, the 55 timer in more detail so I'm not going to go into too much detail here but um, needless to say that this 555 timer is reliant on really on this capacitor here C4 
what happens is as C4 charges up, it gets to a threshold value, and once that threshold value is exceeded, then the capacitor then discharges, and so and then it's ready to. And then once it discharges below a, a, a particular threshold, it will then start to charge up, discharge, then charge up, and it'll keep doing that. And that's the oscillating effect. Now, depending on what the value of C4 is, will give you the amount, will give you the frequency of oscillation, how fast that's happening. And when that happens, what happens at the output is every time that discharges, the output here goes low, and that causes this uh, uh, read relay switch to then uh, switch off. When this goes low, the read relay switch has got a plus voltage on this side to a zero volt that allows current to flow. When current flows through a magnetic relay, it activates the coil which activates the switch. I'll talk about the relay in, in just a minute. But that basically means that this relay will be switching on and off. And the speed that it switches on and off is determined by the frequency of this 5-5 five, five time oscillator which is determined by this capacitor C4. So basically that's really quickly how the uh, timer works. Now this D1 here, because the magnetic relay involves an inductor, we use D1 to protect the 555 timer from any surge when uh, the, the magnetic relay is switched on and off. So this is purely for protection, so you do need that D1, it needs to be in that orientation, otherwise the 55 timer uh, will be damaged by the, the high voltages that occur when you switch a, an inductor on and off. So the relay here, I've just drawn that over here, what's happening is these, this point here I've labelled 2 and 3, that's these two points on here. So as I said before, the voltage comes in and that's point 2 here. So there's a high voltage here and when that's low, that's a low voltage. So when that's a low voltage, you're going to get current flowing through the coil. When current flows through an inductor, it produces a magnetic field. Now that magnetic field will actually have a magnetic effect on this, on this very simple circuit round here. Now this circuit just consists of a copper wire that runs on the outside here, completely isolated from this, this inner circuit, but it's got a, a spring-loaded uh, arm here, and when that's activated, it pulls it down so it closes the switch, and when it's deactivated, it springs back up again. If you change the current through here very rapidly, on and off, then obviously that switch is going to bounce up and down. So that's a, a very fast switching action. You can get things like uh, uh, switching uh, relay noise and you might when you hear this I mean this is a very this is meant just for a special effect so it doesn't matter that you hear this switching noise but when we uh, when we go through it and I'll show you it working you'll be able to hear this kind of tick, 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 this kind of switching noise but actually I think it more adds to the the metallic sort of voice so it actually doesn't do it any harm again the diode across here is, is acting very similar to this diode here extra protection here really um, this diode maybe this this diode is not required but there's no harm putting it in but this diode kind of doing the same thing here you can see that it's connected to the plus side when the inductor switches off the inductor doesn't want anything to change so if there's a current running through it and we switch off that current the inductor will want to continue pushing that current through so by doing that you end up with a very high voltage at one side and that will then cause the current not to flow into 3, which would damage the 5-5, but actually run down into the diode here, which protects, which protects this unit. And all it does then is, uh, is, is the, uh, the power then just gets absorbed by the circular circuit here, which happens very quickly, and so there's no damage done then. Now the outer circuit with the switch here then is just connected across here. So now you can see how it's going to work. When the 5-5 timer is switching that uh, magnetic relay on and off very quickly it's switching it's in effect switching this negative feedback extra section on the negative feedback very very quickly so r4 then is is being changed at the frequency of what this is oscillating at and that what gives the warbling uh, metallic voice effect so so what's you know we can show this in diagrammatic form so here's the signal coming in here i've just sort of roughly given you what the signal might look like so uh, here might be a voice signal coming in. Now this this is being activated 
and it looks like a square wave basically you can see that it's on there off there on there on off on on and if we combine that with that which is effectively what happens here we get the signal is loud then the signal is very small so you get this kind of warbling effect on the v out here yeah so that's kind of how it works if you look at the signals these are all the parts for this circuit and that's the the circuit described really um, I've gone through this quite quickly because obviously there's a lot of details about how negative feedback works on an op amp and the fact that no current goes into the inputs and uh, you know the rules of uh, how an op amp works I didn't really want to cover that here because there's plenty of other places that will cover how an op amp works but uh, it's quite a simple device really and the important thing is that the equation that relates how the input is related to the output is simply given by the value of R4 and R1 and the bigger the value of R4 the more V out we get and uh, you'll, you'll can see that if you go and look up how op amps work on the internet you'll find the, the equation is very very simple it's something like uh, uh, V out equals V in uh, R4 over R1 times V in something like that it's a very simple equation but again you don't need to to know that equation just to build this very simple computer voice circuit so let me just show you uh, how that actually all works. Okay, what I've done is I've built this circuit on two breadboards here. Uh, of course, the one the one you'd build in the tin can would be completely uh, self-contained. Actually, these parts, if you close, if you have them very close together, they can easily get on a really tiny uh, circuit board. But uh, obviously for this test I wanted to run them on, a, on breadboards so you could uh, see the connections a little bit better, although it looks c kind of messy. Um, anyway, here's the very cheap, I've just used a very cheap uh, amplifier that you can buy out from a pound shop or something, that'll do. Um, the input is uh, a, another cheap MP3 player, I, I, it's a very cheap sand disc player here. And that that's for the input side and then just have a look at the circuits here if we have a if you can see through the the clutter there I've got the circuit diagram underneath so here for example this uh, this negative feedback potentiometer here that's that potentiometer here that I'm pointing to there and uh, this here is the volume for the amplifier which is that potentiometer there uh, so that can adjust the volume there and then finally the 555 timer circuit is this block here and that potentiometer is basically this one which uh, will speed up and slow down the actual uh, oscillations so the the kind of uh, warbling you can speed up the warbling or slow the warbling down so I kind of set some uh, default values there for the minute uh, without any uh, negative feedback well in fact uh, with this set to a very high value so that the R4 is effectively the only resistance um, and uh, so although this might be uh, oscillating it, you won't hear so much of the effect and then what I'll do is I'll I'll turn this uh, potentiometer down so we hear more and more of the warbling effect and then you'll get a sort of feel for it the only problem is I haven't got a voice on this recording I've just recorded some music so what you would do in the ideal world is you would make some sort of monster voice um, you know for your play or whatever you was doing and uh, even if you used a microphone instead of a, a player here you could uh, have a microphone plugged into a, a, a small preamplifier you know a real tiny little preamplifier that was all it need just enough to boost the the input voltage enough to drive this uh, op amp uh, amplifier that's all you would need I'll switch it on and at the moment the negative feedback is uh, won't won't be effective you won't hear any much of it there is a slight effect but not a lot so I'll just turn that on now so you can hear what's going on I've got some music already playing so there's uh, the music you can hear there's a slight distortion distortion in that um, maybe let me turn the volume down a little bit so you can hear my voice better That's probably a better volume. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the uh, the negative feedback. So I'm going to uh, decrease that so you should get more, decrease this potentiometer, decrease this resistance here so you'll get more negative feedback. And you should hear that sound start to warble. So I'll do that now and just have a listen to that.
You should be able to hear that now. That's Turn the volume up, because you lose a bit of volume, obviously, when you do that. So now you can hear it's warbling. It's a shame there's not some singing on there. You'd hear that better. Now I can also change the the oscillation so we can change the pitch. Now I can I, I, I'm sure you can hear that motorboating now, that relay. There you go, you can hear that. In the silence you can hear that. So with the next set song coming up. I'm just turning that now, you can hear it. Hopefully that doesn't just sound like a lot of distortion, but it does sound quite good when there's some voices. Now I've turned that, I've backed that off a bit now, so let's increase that. So anyway, that should give you a rough idea of the effect there. It's much better when there's a, a spoken voice. Uh, obviously, you can put intonations in your own voice. You can make yourself sound like a monster and change these uh, potentiometers around a bit. Uh, and I'm sure you can get that uh, the sense of uh, what that really sounds like. It would be better with a voice, but uh, I haven't got a voice on there. So uh, hopefully you get the feel for that. And that's that's that circuit.